and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is a special edition where our focus is on the Q2 earnings and the company on our radar today is KEC International which is a global EPC firm having presence in over 45 countries across continents. Now the company has posted its numbers for Q2 that's the July to September quarter. The net sales have come in at 44.99 crores which is up 10.7% uh, from uh, 4064 odd crore rupees that was clocked in in September of 2022. The quarterly profit has come in at 55.8 crores in September 2023. That's been largely flat with an uptick of just 1%. EBITDA, however, has grown definitely about 50 odd percent at 290 odd crore rupees. And to discuss more insights on the earnings this time around and the outlook going forward, I am now joined by the top management of the company. Mr. Vimal Kedriwal joins in. He's the MD and the CEO of KC International. Welcome, sir, and thank you so much for taking the time out for this discussion on Business Today Television. Let me kickstart by asking you. How happy are you on uh, the Q2 performance this time around? What contributed to the factors in terms of the growth on the top line this time? So good afternoon, Sakshi, and thanks for having me. I think if, uh, we are generally happy with what we have been able to achieve. We achieved a, a, a almost 11% revenue growth. If you look at our EBITDA, we are 170 basis points over the same quarter last year. And generally, the guide numbers are in accordance with the guidance which we had. Our PAT has not grown much because in the corresponding period last year, we had, I think, 20 or 29 crore of tax right back. Otherwise, as you said, PBT has grown, EBITDA has grown, sales has grown. So overall, we are uh, quite happy. The other piece uh, why we are happy is our TND business, which is the core of our business, more than 50 percent, has mm -hmm. also bounced back. So overall, I think we are pretty okay. I'll say happy with the numbers. Okay. And what's the kind of guidance that you have overall for the entire fiscal year 2024? For so the fiscal year, we have said that, uh, you know, last year our revenue was around 17,000 and odd. So we said that we should be around 20,000 crores of revenue. So anything 15% uh, plus uh, would be our revenue growth. Okay. And on the margins, we had said that uh, uh, for second half, we should be closer to 8%. First half, we are close to 6%. So overall for the year, we should be somewhere closer to 7% is the, is the guidance for the year. Okay, got that. Sir, you've also been receiving a lot of orders or of late. Could you tell us the current picture of the order book and uh, in Q2, what were the order flows like? So our overall order flow, I don't have exactly for Q2, but our overall order flow for the half year was around 9,000 crores. Okay. And uh, we have a guidance of around 25,000 crores. So on H2, we do expect to receive around 16,000 crores of order intake. And if you look at the breakup, uh, around 2,000 crores was from civil, then we had cables and around 800 crores from railways, and the rest was from our transmission uh, distribution division. Mm, okay. And what's the execution um, currently for the orders that you've already received, sir? So, sorry, what, what would you like to know on that? The execution, I mean, is, is it already executed? Is it in pipeline? By when will it be executed? So, uh, our total order book today, unexecuted order book is 31,000 crores okay. and another 4,000 crores are L1. So, in a way, we are around, we are sitting on an order book of 35,000 crores mm. for execution beyond quarter two. So, part of it will obviously get executed okay. in H1. We are expecting a revenue of around 11,000 crores in H1. Mm. And the balance of 24,000, you know, largely should get executed next year, almost a large part of it. Fair enough, sir. Sir, and what about the pipeline going forward from here? Uh, do you expect heightened flows coming in from the government as well? Because now we are going to be seeing a lot of state elections and then general elections in the next year as well, especially in the infrastructure space where you also have a large part of exposure to. Do you expect a large part of uh, orders coming in from the government? If yes, if you could quantify that. So if you look at the what I saw on the numbers, we said we have got 9,000, we are aiming at 25. So we are talking about almost doubling the order intake in H2 versus H1. A large part of it obviously would come from India, uh, but there is some order intake uh, which will come from uh, the, our overseas operations, especially I'll say from Middle East and, and part of it would come from the Americas, both mm. North America and uh, South America. I think these okay. are three areas where we are looking at it uh, for our major order intakes. Okay. So, since you talked about the Middle East, I just wanted to understand how are you looking at the current geopolitical scenario in the Middle East? Is that likely to have any kind of an impact on uh, the order flow and the demand from that region? Uh, it's actually very difficult to say. As of now, we are not seeing any impact. In fact, I was in 
Saudi Arabia around a few a few days back and we did mm. not see any impact on either on the client on the business or the people whom I met I did meet people from Lebanon also so mm. as such I did not see any worry in, in the system anywhere okay okay happens, we do not know geopolitical but uh, otherwise uh, business wise I am not seeing any any, any impact uh, anywhere okay because the countries which are impacted let's say Israel or Lebanon or maybe some Iran or or Syria and all that or even yeah, I mean, we are we are not there in any of those countries. Mm, okay, fair enough, sir. Also, sir, if you could just break up for us, like you know, the current uh, revenue mix that you have from various segments that you operate in uh, your TND space, railway, civil, and cable space, and where do you see uh, the maximum uh, revenue contribution coming in in the few years, next few years also? So, so typically, I I don't have the exact breakup. Typically, TND sure. is around. Typically, TND is around 50% of our order of our, our revenue. Okay, okay? and uh, civil would be roughly more than 20%. Railways would be around 15%. Railways been slightly uh, showing a degrowth. Otherwise, railways was used to be around 20%. And then we would have, we have cables which will be around 10-12%. That's a very broad breakup. Okay, if you look at uh, growth in terms of percentage, it would be highest would come from civil. Mm. We, we have grown around 42% this quarter and I think even next year we expect at least 35-40% growth coming out of civil in terms of percentage. But in terms of absolute number, since uh, TND is already half of our numbers, uh, absolute number growth would be more in, in TND than in any other business. Okay. And uh, sir, since you're talking about railways also, I wanted to understand, you know, is a major chunk also now starting to flow in uh, from, uh, say, metros, monorails, Vande Bharat, uh, the speed trains that the government is now increasingly focusing on, sir? So right now, if you look at the government focus, it has been more on uh, Vande Bharat and also on uh, station upgradation, etc. Yes. Okay? The, the infra spend has been relatively lower. That, that's the way we look at it okay <clears throat> but our, our expectation is that now that with so many trains running with all these things happening with a government thrust on a speed upgradation uh, clearly the next uh, uh, bout of spending would be on infrastructure mm. okay how do we have you know tracks which can take 160 kilometers 150 kilometers or you know how do you ensure that uh, uh, you know the the safety wise everything is well so so coverage and all that so we will clearly see a lot more tenders coming out on, on the infra side in the next few months. Okay. So, could you also talk to us about the cash flows uh, position currently, the cash on the books and uh, if there is any plan uh, to deploy that cash going forward? So, right now we have a, a overall borrowing level of around six and a half thousand. So, obviously we don't have much of cash on our balance sheet. Hmm. Uh, I think one of the, uh, I think the the negative for our this quarter has been the interest cost, which was at 4%. Yeah. We are now working on reducing it to, to around 3-3.2%. Okay. That, that's, that's the action plan. Hmm. Okay, fine, sir. Um, and uh, going forward from here, sir, since you already have a large presence internationally also, are you planning to also expand further your footprint into any other countries? So, Sakshi, we are around, I think we are today present around 30 countries. So, it is the neighboring countries, Nepal, and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, then obviously Far East, we are there in, in Thailand, Malaysia, etc. Middle East, we are there in virtually every country. Mm. And uh, we are there in Africa in many countries. So, to us, it is it's just an opportunistic expansion. Wherever we get projects and all that, we will look at those uh, countries. But what we are also trying doing is that we are trying to expand our other businesses internationally. So, okay. whether it is civil, whether it is oil and gas, whether it is railways, we have mm. already started bidding for, you know, smaller projects, etc. We already started executing the first uh, railway project in Bangladesh. Mm. So I think on the, on the international side, rather than geographical expansion, which may happen opportunistically, we may start seeing more business-wise expansion happening okay. in the international Okay. So currently, what is uh, the, of course, you said that, you know, major chunk is domestic. There is a slight chunk of international. Going forward, how would the mix change between domestic and international? So today international is typically I'll say most of it is all TND. So we'll we'll restrict it that way that it's all TND. So TND sometime back was seventy percent international and thirty percent India. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe it may change slightly because the issue is that you know India is also growing, Saudi is growing, US is growing. So I honestly do not know whether the, the mixes will change because both the engines are firing. Absolutely, absolutely. And that works well for you, for sure, sir. Um, any growth opportunities in terms of organic and inorganic growth opportunities that you may be looking at, sir? 
So our civil business is completely organic. We were not there five years back. Today, this year, we'll close 5,000 crores. So we keep on looking at new segments in the, especially in the civil business. In fact, the last quarter, we got an order for the first order for building a multi-speciality hospital uh, in, in uh, Eastern India. And then we mm. got an order to build a, a, a very large uh, factory for a global FMCG. So, you know, okay. that, that was the segments which we keep on expanding that way. Okay. And so where exactly is going to be the next one coming in from, from hospitals you've seen, FMCG now you've seen, which is the next one that you're going to see from? So a couple of areas where we are not there in a large way would be something like an oil and gas and all that, where we do infra yes. work, but we don't do process, etc. That could be one area. That could mm -hmm. be oil, oil tankages could be another big area. Third one would be on the renewable side. On the solar side, we just started doing a, we are doing a 600 megawatt project, but we may expand that entire portfolio of solar, maybe wind, you know, so there are other areas, green hydrogen is one where we already put in one bid. So, you know, mm -hmm. all those on, on the green side, on the renewables, etc., would, would be areas where you, where, where you will see us expanding. That's wonderful, sir. Well, uh, on that note, thank you so much, sir, for uh, being with us on the show. And uh, thank you for uh, sharing all these insights from your earnings. All the very best to you for the upcoming quarters. And we shall definitely catch, uh, uh, catch up again with you to understand more about the business growth opportunities that you're seeking, sir. Thank you for having me, Sakshi. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a good day, sir. Thank you so much. And with that, we'll wrap up this quick edition. For